Hey everyone, how are you doing? Uh, welcome to the lesson. In this lesson, we are going to be looking at a song that is featured in Trinity Rock and Pop Guitar Grade 4. Uh, it's the opening song from the book. Uh, the song is called Jenny Don't Be Hasty, a song by Paul Onitini. Uh, I do hope I'm pronouncing his name correct. Uh, apologies if I'm not. Uh, great little song. I, I've been doing this for a number of years now with the students and um, certain parts of the song I've noted uh, a little bit of an issue for uh, students when they first start to play this track. Uh, namely, you have to do your own improvised solo towards the end of the song. That's a, a kind of a new part that's been uh, introduced when you hit grade four. Uh, and of course that theme continues for the remainder of the grades. Um, the backing track is provided with it. And of course in the book, the course book, you've got all the information there that's written in notation and also in tablature. Uh, I just wanted to go through uh, some of the chords that are featured in here. Uh, a similar chord structure was covered in a track on an earlier grade, which was a song by Tom Robinson, where they was using a, a, a D chord that was actually taken from a, a C shape using a bar chord structure. But in the early courses, it wasn't really demonstrated to you the same way. Now, in this song, they take this idea of keeping a bar on the, the second fret, because your opening chord is an F sharp minor chord. <laughs> And the song introduces actually with one bar where you've got a build up on that, where you're taking the F minor chord and you're building it up. What we move from is from the F sharp minor to the A using the bar to hold down the two frets. The two on the D, two on the G and the two on the B. Then we're placing our fingers down to play this inversion of a D chord, starting with this F sharp, which is on 4th fret, through to 2, which is through your bar on the G, and your second finger holds down the D, which is the 3rd fret on the B string. It gives us a D chord. Lift the fingers off back to the A. And then we play a B minor bar chord with our root on the A string. Quite a, a good little movement by keeping the first finger on this second fret because he's given us access to this F minor, to an A, to this D, and also to the B minor. And from there we move back to the A. Then we've got this E. Now you can play the E by just shifting your first finger up so it's holding down two on the A and two on the D and then back to the F sharp minor and repeats all over again so you get now when we enter the chorus section got a quite a bit of a movement on that but we're still doing most of the work around this bar on the first fret or using the A. So we've got the first fret on the second fret, should I say? Okay. Uh, so we start off with this build up with the F sharp minor again. So it's playing on the three and four. We hit the A to the B minor to the F sharp minor. Then we go to the D and now it's the standard D. Back to this new chord that they're introducing which is an A with a C sharp in the bass. And the C sharp is here on this fourth fret on the A string. So again, it could be seen as another inversion. Got that C sharp back, taking the finger off to the A. So let me just play that through again. So we got F minor, going to the A, B minor, F sharp minor, the D, 
and then this A with a C sharp in the bass, the slash chord, to an A. Back to the B minor, F sharp minor, D. And they are introducing again another chord, another slash chord into this. It starts off the same, get our F sharp minor, going to the A, B minor to F sharp minor, to the D, to this C sharp A chord, to the A. Now we get this E with a G sharp in the bass. Now the way we're going to play that, put your first finger on second fret of the D, you put your third finger on fourth fret of the G, you've got a bit of a stretch down here, you're going to play a little finger on fifth fret of the B string. So we get this, what well, is actually an E5 chord. There's your one, there's the five note from the chord, and there's your octave. And the F sharp is played with the second finger that reaches over to like the G sharp. The G sharp is played by reaching over to the G sharp on the low E string, which is on the fourth fret. Now, we're actually going to mute the A string so we can get a little bit casual when we place that second finger down on that G. So it mutes the A, but allows the D, the G, and the B string to play through. So that is the E with the G sharp in the bass that you see in the sheet music. And we play that twice. Then we move back to a B minor. Then we do that bar on the D playing eighths. Finishing with an E major chord. So let me just play that through to you on the second chorus. So it starts off with the build up on the F sharp. this point you would go into the solo which we are going to cover in another section of this lesson now from the solo when we finish the solo we go back to the second chorus so again you're going to have to play that E with the G sharp in the bass go into the B minor and it goes to the D and instead of going to the E we go back and we play the intro, the verse part. So we get the D. That would be out of the song. So I've gone through it very quickly because of course you've got the tablature there and you've got the backing track demo to go through as well. So. I just wanted to show you the variations of the different chords and how you would actually voice the chords that are shown in this book. So, what we're going to do now, we're going to start talking and looking at the guitar solo. Right, let's have a look at the solo for this song. Now, the song itself is actually written in the key of F sharp minor. Also, if we look at it as a major key, but it very features strongly as an F sharp opening with that F sharp chord that we're going to be playing through that. Now, all the chords that you are playing are from the key of A major. So, A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G sharp. Uh, if we think of the F sharp minor, same notes, but this time we're starting from the F sharp. So you get F sharp, G sharp, A, B, C sharp, D, E, and back to F sharp. Now, the simplest scale to play over this section will be the F sharp minor pentatonic scale. 
Uh, F minor pentatonic is a five note scale and very simple to play and I'm sure that we've uh, you've seen many lessons it's probably the easiest or the most basic scale that you ever learn when you first start off now to play the F sharp minor pentatonic all the notes that you're going to be playing with your first finger are all on first are all on this second fret got an F sharp got an A got a B C sharp got a E and back to the F sharp five note scale and we can continue them notes down across the guitar so we've got the F sharp we've already played here go to the A go to the B C sharp and we go to the E and then we go back to the F sharp and we've also because we played two notes of string we've got this little pattern forming we can also go to play the A I've attached to the information on this lesson the layout of the F sharp minor scale and I've also included a diagram with a couple of extra uh, notes that we can add onto this pattern which we include in here I've got 5 and 7 and I've also got 5 7 on the E and we can take down uh, 6 fret on the G string into that shape so I've got this little part where I can come out moving like that but well, first of all when you see the shape and when you see the pattern that I've drawn for you on the uh, attached diagram get used to playing scale so when you look at the guitar you can see it embedded onto the fretboard now, of course you're not going to play the solo. Well, I hope you're not anyway. Now, we're going to try and put a melody. We're going to try and put some structure to the solo. Now, we don't want to just attack it note after note after note. For the listener, it starts to just become a mass of jumbled notes that we're having to listen to. Now, when I start to construct a solo, especially when I'm playing a blues-style solo, I always try to take on the structure of what we call call and answer. I also try and utilize I play as though I'm having a conversation with the listener. Now, if we talk in conversation, we don't continually talk one after the other. Again, I hope we don't, because the person who's listening to you wouldn't understand. They'd lose all context of what you're saying. So when we are in conversation, we speak, we couple of sentences then we pause we speak again so we've got a dialogue as we're talking in conversation when we play the guitar where we're doing the solo it's the same thing you listen to the most classic solos out and you can hear definitive sections play a piece of music break another part of the music part of the melody a break another section so a lead solo is made up of small little sound bites being put together. So when we're putting this solo together, this improvisation solo, we are just going to do little sound bites to build up an interesting storyline for the listener. Now we've only got a few bars to play over it, so we don't have to go way over the top. We're not going to be playing an extended five-minute solo. Play some notes, make an interesting melody line, and get out back into the chord sequence again. Now, one of the, the habits I see people starting to do when they first play guitar solos, they always start on the root, comfort zone. They know that that is the start of the scale. So the solos always go, and then they move. And of course, if you're here, there's only really one place you're gonna go, and that's up. The other alternative is people start on the high E on the F sharp and then we just get a descending or an ascending pattern and what I always tell my students is to start in the middle of the guitar that way I can either go up or I go down on the scale so if I was to start my solo on the fourth fret of the G string I've got two notes I can put I can go backwards on that direction I could go 
I can work between these little boxes. I've got four and two on the G, and I've got four and two, same pattern, on the D, so I could work between them notes. I, I could take it as a pattern just going extended. Or I could form patterns. I could take this where I go. Simple like that. Where I'm just, instead of going, I've taken this where I've gone down three notes, back up one note, and down two. And because I've got the same pattern above on two and four on the A string, I could do the same thing. I could continue that down. I could do from the D string, I could go D4, D2, down to A4. So I could take... So I could take this. Down there. Or I could move it the other direction. And what I'm trying to do when I do this is not go too far away from that initial position that I started off, whether I go up slightly or down slightly. I've tried just to work two strings at the most, only using four notes. But it's amazing what you can get out of just playing four notes. Now, of course, you don't have to play a different note every time. I could go. I'm doing. I've got that little, little note that I'm repeating here on the B note to get a different effect. I could change instead of going one and two and three and four on my time, and I can go changing the phrasing that I'm doing on that. But each time, I'm not trying to make a, a, an extremely mega long solo. I'm just taking little small bites that play through. Of course, with the backing track, I can start to develop them. I could take a line going. track it's in quite interesting. Also try and move around a little bit on the scale. Remember I told you about these two extra notes here? I can go up to them. So I can get something now I did a little slide back to put me to my normal position. So just using them extra two notes give me a little bit of more of a twist to the sound I was playing now, another thing that we should try and be conscious of is when we're playing through is that we need to use chord tones when we're playing through this it just resolves everything and keeps it more structured now if we're playing F sharp minor we're playing that over an F sharp chord that chord that we've got there which are the notes Two, which is the F sharp, then I've got the C sharp, I've got the F sharp, then I've got the A, which is on the bar there, I've got the C sharp again, and I've got the F sharp. Oh, we should try and resolve onto one of them notes as we're playing through. So if I'm playing a solo, I can start off away from there, but it's always best to try and get back onto one of the chord tones. So I get back on a chord tone. Chord tone again. Chord tone. Chord tone, and then chord tone again. Chord tone. Chord tone. As you play through and you put in together these little, little snippets, little sound bites that you're doing, try and always get back onto your shape of that F minor chord. Now, as you develop your solo playing, you'll start to expand this whole idea of moving across different chords and using the different chord tones. 
But this is an introduction. This is probably the first time you've done this in any graded exam. So we're just going to set a few boundaries that we need to try and keep to just to make it sound correct as we're playing through. So what we covered so far, we've got the F minor pentatonic. Mm -hmm. Then we've talked about not starting on the bottom or the top, starting in the middle using them shapes that we've got across two and four fret on the three strings, A, D and G. Breaking sections down into small bites. So we're having a conversation. You know, hello, how are you today? I'm fine, thank you for asking me. Very corny, I know. But that is a way you can look at it. Just having a conversation as you play the guitar. Oh, you've only got a short section to work it so try and get the little things in there now, now what I've included in this video is an extended backing track through the guitar solo so you can practice without having to keep restarting switching it through going through the solo starting all over again so you've got a continual loop of the solo section that you can practice going through experimenting one last thing that I'd like to show you. We have got an F sharp minor here on second fret. Now we have the octave position of F sharp minor up on the 14th fret, which means that I can play an octave position of whatever I've done down here on two and the four position down here on two fret. I can take it up to 14th fret. So I can take. <laughs> In the exact same shape starting with that first finger on the 14th so I can take and that gives it a really nice way of possibly finishing your guitar solo now on the demo that you're going to see at the end of this I have played the guitar through the song and I've also done a very very simplified guitar solo I haven't gone for any really fast fiat tricks on this. No, made it nice and simple. Started off position two, moved up to these five and seven fret positions, back to the normal, and then I finished up here on this octave position of the F sharp minor pentatonic. Oh, so, I hope this has helped. Uh, if you've got any questions about anything I've covered in this lesson, please send them through to me. All the information is down beneath. You'll be able to see it on the link. Let's get that right there. So you'll be able to see the information. So, um, hopefully this will help you get a very good mark when you do your exam for Trinity on the grade four. I will be featuring other tracks from Trinity. If there's anything that you particularly like me to cover in the grades, uh, right up to grade eight, please drop me a line and I'll go through the various parts for you. Now, improvisation, I'm not going to show you a set solo. Uh, the improvisation part, that's for you. I can show you ideas, but I'm not actually going to write the solo for you. That really wouldn't be fair to anybody else and not what an improvisation is. But I can show you possible ways to achieve what you're trying to do, what you possibly hear in your head but are not being able to get it onto the guitar. So, enjoy the playthrough, look at the solo, and you'll be able to play along with the attached backing track to this presentation that I've got here for you. So until next time, it's been a pleasure. Look forward to seeing you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>